Hi everyone. In this video, we will actually go over automating data operations or programming and how to start our first program. So I will go briefly over automating with VBA and VBA concepts. And then I will let you actually go over the readings that you have been provided on Canvas. So today we will uh, actually we already have talked about the logic of programming, which is flow charts and also the process of the input process output. And today we will start with VBA in Excel and we will create a calculation button in Excel. So I will let you watch this video here. This is a really nice video that uh, is presented by Bill Gates. Access to uh, and it the world. Edit, like, I'm, Mark Zuckerberg it's, it's and, all of these and things the have been right code. It is all about the importance of programming. So I will uh, let you watch this video because there might be questions in the exam and also in the quiz and also in the final comprehensive exam. Uh, the optional one might be some questions from these videos. So I'll let you um, take a look. Uh, again, here are some. I will let you also do the readings. Uh, that way, I don't take so much time from uh, for the recording. Again, so we already talked about process. So I want to talk about this important input process output. And this is an example. Let's say that we want to play tennis. So what would be our input for playing tennis? So the input you might say yeah we need to have a ball and we have to have rackets well what type of ball we need to specify what type of ball we need as an input and what type of racket because the ball can be a football ball it can be a soccer ball it can be a ping pong ball it can be any type of ball so we need to specify exactly what is the type of ball before we start and then the racket what is the type of that racket that we need to play tennis so is it the ping pong racket is it uh, you know rugby whatever the racket can be so we need to specify that so that's why uh, and also who are the players are they babies are they humans non-humans uh, and so on and also the court so and then the process will be the rules for the tennis a game and then the output will be the score so again here what is the input who are the players are they kids dogs and professionals and so on and then the balls are they ping pong football or tennis ball so so balls so we need to make uh, be very specific with our input so we will use this logic when we are programming and so it's very important that we start with declaring the types of variables whether the variable is going to be string meaning a text the value of that variable is going to be text or it's going to be numeric or it's going to be date and so on so we need to specify exactly because computers they don't understand they are not as smart as we are so we need to tell them exactly what what type of variable to expect so again um, there are different types of variables that we need to understand when we are programming and we are coding so there are the integers so the most common ones that i'm going to talk about today are those ones but there are others as well but the most common ones are the integer so integer when we have a whole number so let's say age when I say my age is 20 so my age is a whole number so it's not 20.5 uh, so if I want to use decimals then I will use a data type as double so integer would be a good for example good uh, data type for age or good data type for number of donuts for example a person might buy uh, for a variable called number of donuts and also double will be good for let's say an example that we might need decimals in uh, can be uh, price the price of a donut let's say it is 1.2 uh, 1 dollars and 20 cents for example 
So in that case, we need the double data type. So in this case, the price of donut will be, uh, data type will be double. And then string, we use the data type string for a variable that has values that are text. For example, color. If we, I have a variable called color, and the values of the color will be blue, yellow, white, black, and so on. So all of those are text. Basically, I need that I will define or declare the string or the, the color variable as string because its values are text. They are not numbers. And then currency. Currency is when we want to uh, you know, use it for price, for example. So double in currency can be used e exchangeably. Uh, would be fine, but currency will help us actually when we are we have a number that has decimals and we want it to be formatted with a dollar sign and so on. And then we have the data type as a data type date. So now let's move on <coughs> and let's test your understanding of the data types that we have talked about. So what do you think would be a good data type for student ID? So think about it and say it and then we will go from there so student ID which is basically a number that we don't really need to calculate so it can bring it go from 1 all the way to infinity so in that case it can we can use it as actually as a string because a number can be a string can be actually used as we when we use it as a string basically the number we are not using it for calculation or you can actually use it uh, so student ID can be variable data type as string or it can be as also a number or in that case integer either way would be correct but for me I prefer to use it as string because student ID I didn't need it for calculation but if you use it also as uh, integer it will not be wrong as for student name this one it is either right or wrong so the data type for student name, because the name, the student name can be Emma, it can be uh, Joe, it can be Doe, it can be whatever. In that case, the name or the value for the student name is text, so it has to be a string variable. So exam score, so the score you can get 91.5, you can get uh, uh, 95.5. So in this case what would be a good choice for a data type is it double currency or integer so again we said we use double when we are using a numeric value that has decimals so double would be a good candidate or a good data type for this variable uh, which is the exam score so now for the student age age as we said it is a whole number we can say my age is to 20 and a half so in this case I will use integer for my uh, the student age variable all right so now how do we declare variables in excel vba so to declare a variable we start with a keyword or uh, we call it dim which is declare in uh, so dim declare in memory so dim uh, and then we name the va variable as and then the data type so dim hours as integer so how we declare a variable um, as a string so we can say dim name as string declare variable as double dim score as double and so on so you get the idea now how we can um, declare variables so now also remember when we talked about the input the process and the output so in Excel or in, in, in VBA we have to declare or actually define our input and our output so our input in this case, let's say when we start our first code, we need to, to have the name of the variable and assign it to a certain cell in Excel. So in this case, we are assigning the variable called message. We are assigning, assigning it to the cell value D1. So again, the input, we start with the name of the variable and then we equal it to the cell range in Excel. On the other hand, the output, we start with the cell value and then we equal it and we assign it to that variable. Then equal, then we declare or we, we write the name of the variable that we want to assign this value to. 
Uh, so, as you can see here, and we will we will do this in in in, uh, in in an example in a little bit. But here you will say the number of donuts equals worksheets, and then we the name of the worksheet is called beef nut dot range, and then the value of the cell in that Excel sheet it is B two. So number of donuts is assigned to B two cell value. Uh, and so on. So let's look at the anatomy of a code in Excel VBA. So as you can see here, we, sh we always should start with option explicit. So option explicit is helpful because it allows us or it restricts our use of variables only to those that we have declared. If we try to use a variable that is not declared, we will get an error message. So that way we are actually sure that we are using the exact variables that we defined in our code. So option explicit is very important that we include it in our code. And then we can also include some comments. So if I put an apostrophe and then I put any sentences or any words that actually is considered as a comment or for documentation. It doesn't get executed and it doesn't actually stop my, my code from being executed. So it is very helpful and very useful to have comments. And then we start by naming our variable or naming our, uh, or starting our subroutine or sub. So we start with sub and then we give it a name. Let's say in this case is the computing uh, interest sub and then we use also documentations or comments to declare or define our value variables. So to define variables or declare variables, as we declared them earlier, we say dim d. So now we have a variable called d, which is short for deposit. So declare or dim d as double, deposit as double, dim, and then we put actually in, 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 a, in a comment format to see or to know what this abbreviation stands for. So it's very helpful. Then we, we go ahead and start with the input. So we start with the name of the variable and then we assign it to a value in Excel. In this case, the D is assigned to cell B2. And then R, which is the rate, is assigned to B3. And number of years is assigned to B4. And then we do the process, which is basically the formula that we are going to use. So we say B equals deposit times one plus rate raised to the power of number of years. So that's the process and the output. So our actually our formula was calculating B, which is the balance that we already declared as currency. So now we assign, we, we, we assign this uh, cell value which is b5 to show or to spit out the balance value and then we end up so again it's very important that we add comments and let's look at uh, so uh, let me go back we will go back uh, to this one in a little bit so here let me show you an example for so if we have an excel sheet and we have this anatomy, we have this uh, interface. So we have the deposit here as B, B2 and our, the rate is in B3, number of years in B4, and the balance will be in B5, right? So this is exactly what we have done here. So when we start, we start by starting a sub. So we start with the sub and then we declare our variables. So we declared all, our, all of our variables, the input variables, as well as the output variable. In this case, the output variable was the B, the balance. All right, and then the input variables, we assign them. So that was the input, uh, the input variables. We assign them to a certain cell. So we assign D, R, and N to B2, B3, B4. Then our process, which is basically the formula or the function. And then we did uh, the output, which is we just want um, Excel to spit out the balance in cell B5. All right, and then we end sub by ending it. So now let me go back because I want you, uh, I want you to go through this. So if you have a PC, we will need to uh, install or add in the developer 
uh, tab and if you are using a Mac also this is what you will need to go go through ex to Excel in the top left corner and then go preferences and then in the ribbon just select developer make sure that it is selected so for Excel uh, for a PC we will go to view or actually let's open a uh, we will open an Excel so I already provided you here with the Excel so let's work on this uh, file and before I forget I will also uh, want you to to have a look at those at uh, provided you here with videos and also examples that you can follow more advanced videos but today we will just start with a start and those are some of the videos of how to transform um, uh, flowchart into a VBA code so there are several videos here but today let's start with this guy practice so this is the file that I'm going to use right now and I will, I will also show you how to download so we are on day 12 I will show you also how to do the add-in for developer so you will notice that I already have developer but if you don't have it you can go to file and then go to options and then in options you will say go to customize ribbon and then you will see developer here so make sure that you check developer and click OK as soon as you check it you will see developer here so now I have the default sheet it is called read and write so this is the sheet that we are going to do our first code so to do the, our first code I will just go to visual basic so developer and then I will go to visual basic and I will just double click on sheet 8 which is read and read and write so let's start our code by as we said we should always start with option explicit so option explicit enter and then we can just a comment we'll just put an apostrophe and I will say this is our first code and then enter you will see now it is in green showing that it is a comment so now I will need to start my sub so I will call it sub hello world and then enter as soon as I put the the, the uh, empty parentheses and enter I will see you will notice that I have in sub if you don't have in sub just write it down yourself especially those who are using a Mac now I, I will declare variables so the first step is declare variables so my first variable here because I, what I really want to do is I want to go in Excel and in D1 I want to write a statement and I want to click on a button to show me whatever statement I put in D1 I want it also to show in D5 so basically that's what my first code will be if I say hello world in D1 I want to click a button that will make it show in D5 so let's do that so now I'll declare my variable I will call it message so I will call it dim so I need to start with dim and declare message or dim message as so you tell me what that uh, what type uh, should I put message so is it a string or integer or a double so the value for this the message is going to be actually hello world so in this case it is string data type so so that was my mm, declaration of the variable so now let's start with the input so input so my input basically I need to assign the message to a certain uh, as an input to a certain uh, cell in Excel so I want to assign it to D to D1 first as an input so I will say message equals work sheets and then open parentheses and in single or in quotations I need to put the name of the sheet that I have here 
So I'll go back and I'll just copy paste it and close that quotation dot and then range. So the range we said we want to put it in B1 and also again inside quotation marks and then dot and then range. Uh, actually value dot value. All right. So as soon as I in, uh, hit enter now it looks it looks it's working for me. Now I will just say since I don't have a process here I will just go ahead and go to output. So my output in this case will be actually I will assign this value or cell Excel value. In this case we said we want it to be D5. We want it to spit out whatever thing I will put it in the message. So this is basically my first code. So now I can just go back here to Excel and I can go ahead and start or create a button. So I'll go to insert button and then let's say that I want to put the button somewhere here. So I'll just drag and leave it and then make sure that I select the correct macro. So here I called it I called it hello world. All right, so then I can just modify it and call it run. All right, so now this is the cell that I need to insert. So this is my input and D5 will be my output. So now let's say output hello world and then run. You will see my output was here. So let's say I'll say hi all and run. Now it will show it in D5. So you got the idea. This is the first code that we will do and then you will get the chance to do more practice as I said in uh, under this uh, converting flowcharts to VBA code videos. So you have all the tutorials for you here and also you can start actually working on those here by yourself as well. Look at the scenario here and this is what we have as a user interface and this is our flowchart and you can transform this flowchart into code the same way that we talked about in the lecture. Uh, so good luck to you and uh, we'll, uh, I will see you soon.